Hello friends, this is Rahul here as the Chief Executive Officer of Treasury Consulting LLP and today we would be covering another two videos on MIFID. Now this time we would be covering about MIFID FITS. FIT stands for Financial Instrument Reference Data System. As you very well understand that MIFID is on the way and 3rd January 2018 would be a very good time when the Europe will launch the, uh, will launch the MIFID. The purpose of MIFID is very clear that European Union uh, regulators, the regulators of the European Union would like to put European, Un Un uh, European Union at a one platform. Either it is a foreign exchange, it's an investment, it's an equity exposure or it's a non it's a non equity exposure. They would like to put this at a right platform. Now what is the point of that? The point is very clear that because they want all reporting to be happening via all report uh, all trades should be reported right via CCP and few if are not reported that over the period they should be reported. Currently as per MIFID 2, in a post trade reporting the period is T plus 2. However, over a longer tenor somewhere in 2019 and 2020 they would like to make it to T basis which is a real time basis. For example, today you are doing a trade and today uh, the regulators will get to know. This purpose, this video will let you know about one of the objectives of that from T plus 1 to T which is FITS, F-I-R-T-H, which is Financial Instruments Reference Data System. We will go with the flow. Example, we have the highest authority in Europe, which is ESMA, which is European Securities Market Authority. This is being controlled by this controlling banks, financial institution, hedge funds, investment houses, brokers. Please remember this line very carefully because the next video is about that. PPP which is private placement platforms, private placements are not for everybody although we have a lot of videos about PPP. Uh, I'm very surprised that whenever on LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitter I participate on uh, Mifid Second, you know, I found out that people are talking about investment houses, talking about hedge funds, they're talking about corporates. But people don't want to talk about the impact on the PPP. Our next video would be, would be covering uh, our estimated impact on the PPP. Uh, as far as the MIFID sector is concerned. So PPP is again a, again a point of consideration as far as the MIFID second is concerned. And last but not the least we have traders. Now uh, how I am going to trade? Till few years ago, I let's take when I started my career which is 2007. Then the feeders would act as a reference data provider. Example Reuters, example Bloomberg. In the last 10 years of January, we have saw that the financial market has changed. It has changed to the highest level. Now the feeders are no more feeders, rather they are actually moved from a reference data provider to OMS which is order management system, EMS which is execution management system, MTF which is multilateral trading facility. Like in case of uh, Bloomberg, this is this is e EMSX, you have Torex. You have Reuters, which is FXOL, and so on and so forth. Of course, these are not the only names. We have a lot of big names as well. In the last 10 years, feeders, feeders went through a very good path and they have moved from a normal reference data system to the high class uh, uh, market, online market oriented places where people come and trade. It's not about merchandise trades, it's about trade in the financial markets. Few example Reuters is having FXOL. Bloomberg is having EMSX and you have trade web is there and there, there are a lot of platforms which we have right now. Few are on a successful path, few are struggling and few are on the way. Right? Now they actually who are they? They are the reference data providers and ESA, ESMA has already approved almost 28 reference data providers as far as the MIFID second is concerned. But of course the board is small, we cannot mention 28. So the few important which I am mentioning here, which is Thomson Reuters, Bloomberg, Euroclear, Trax, LSE, London Stock Exchange, Abide Financial, Deutsche Bosch, ICAP and TradeWeb. The list is pretty long, I cannot write the complete eight. So these are the few data providers, the reference data providers which we have. So the trade which will flow from this to the data providers, the perspective is the reference data. They will divide this into two parts. Number one, they will divide this into TRAR, TATR which is transaction and trade reporting which would be divided into three parts because as per MIFID 3, transaction and trade reporting can only be happen in either way. It could be MTF, 
which is multilateral trading facility multilateral trading facility is nothing but a multilateral system wherein people can come and go and do a trade on a non discretionary basis example if it is a law it is a law example uh, uh, a bank in canada wanted to sell dollars uh, and buy canadian dollars and uh, they are doing a trade with the jp morgan chase us right assuming here it's rbc royal bank of canada is doing trade with jp morgan chase us right the, the, it is on a non discretionary basis because the settlement cycle for Canadian dollar is T plus 1. On the other hand, a Japanese bank, say uh, ODBC or some other Japanese bank, would like to do a trade with, uh, with an American bank. So they wanted to buy dollars or sell Japanese yen. In that, it is T plus 2 because again, this is on a non discretionary basis. But OTF, Organized Trading Facility, first of all, covers only equity and equity related instruments. It do not contain non-equity related instruments. This is again one of the biggest difference between MIFID 1 and MIFID 2 that MIFID 2 move from equity to non-equity as well. And if I'm not incorrect that it has moved to high class structured derivative as well. Example, your emission derivatives, example, your weather derivatives, example, your structured derivative. So third is a regulated market. What is the regulated market? It is a OTC market. It is a ETD market. It's a it's a margining. We are planning a video that how MIFID second will, will work in case of the ETD market. How the exchange traded derivative margining will work. So there are three ways. As far as TATR is concerned, transaction and trade reporting. One is MTF, multilateral trading facility, OTF, organized trading facilities and RM, which is regulated market. But if I am doing a trade, that must be reported somewhere. Now, don't compare this with the feeder, right? Because there are two distinct identities which we have. Remember carefully, feeders currently are acting like a mirror. Like if you are watching yourself in a mirror, the person in the mirror is not you. A person in the mirror is you, but 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 the total but but you are the only person, right? So it is not that two people are are are, are looking at each other. Similarly, similarly, don't mis don't don't misunderstand feeder with APAs, which is approved publication arrangements. Example: Today, Treasury Consulting LLP, when we will set up in Europe, or next year when we will set up in Singapore, and when we want to trade trade with the EU entity, we will go via feeder, which could be Bloomberg or Reuters. Preferably, we will go with Bloomberg. If we go with the Bloomberg, then Bloomberg will act as a feeder because we need a reference data provider. So we need a feeder here, but that is our call. How we wanted to go either. We wanted to go MTF, which is marginal trading facility, OTF organized trading facility and uh, RM, which is regulated market. Since strategy consulting is a very innovative company. So we will go with MTF, which is marginal trading facility. Now the point is, this is not discretionary. This has to be decided by ESMA. The data which I published, example, Treasury Consulting LLP invested in European bonds of a Luxembourg government. So assuming Luxembourg government offered 10 year bonds and we invested our money in that. All bonds would have ISIN which is International Securities Identification Number, a unique number which is given to every bond. That has to be reported, that has to be done via Bloomberg and it has to be reported to uh, APS, Approved Publication Arrangement. That APS once again will take this from all three sources, whether it's a MTF, it is a OTF or it's a RM. Now the point is I need to, my information would be divided into two parts. Number one, pre-trade reporting, pre-trade transaction reporting, which is PTTR, post-trade transaction reporting. And it will further co covering the following equities, non-equities, deposit receipts, exchange traded funds, bonds, structured products, high frequency trading and algo trading. Of course, when I'm referring to algo trading, we need to understand that uh, very carefully that MIFID second is very strict as far as the algo trading is concerned. Very, very strict. That complete information which started here, like we would be the investment house in Singapore very soon which started here, routed via Bloomberg, reach to MTF, go to the uh, go to the APA, which has been approved by ESMA, and this will go in a repository, which has to be maintained by ESMA, and that repository is known as FITS. 
financial instrument reference data system again we need to understand esma is not making this fits only for the sake of formality they will share this data with 300 trading venues plus the competent authorities in europe so that they will put this data in a public domain example I'm not sure how many people understand that, but how many people been to a website called bis.org, Bank for International Settlement.org. Bank for International Settlements conduct a tri tri triennial uh, survey every year, whereby they will understand that where the foreign exchange market is. So example, if today we are saying that every day the foreign exchange market is $5 trillion, then it is only the credit goes to BIS for doing such a wonderful job so that we are aware about that the per day trading is happening at, at, at 5 trillion dollar. Now the point is from where the BIS is getting the data? Is the BIS is going to bank to bank? Are they going to broker to broker? Are they going to investment house to investment house? Hedge fund to hedge fund? Institutional investor to institutional investor? No. They are going to such data reference points whereby they have the entire data. Example, who are the who best than Reuters and Bloomberg? who together constitute more than 95% of the data reference market of this globe. And where you will get the entire data, swap, currencies, derivative, options, swaptions, and a and, and lot of things. And the job ends here. An institution who do a trade via feeder or reference providers, they need to take a call whether it's a MTF, OTF, or RM. This will reach to the approved publication arrangements that has to be approved by ESMA, not everyone can be ESMA. Of course, ESMA would cover all these equities, non-equities, depository, depository receipts, CTF and so on and so forth. This will go to Befit's ESMA and here come FITS. And that it will come in the public domain. So the European, the respective competitive authority in Europe plus the, the 300 different trading venues, they will get this data which will put this data in the public domain so that we can verify that the impact of MIFID second is going in the right direction and this is currently on a T plus one basis. So today I am doing a trade, tomorrow it will get reported but as per the research is concerned, as per the various directives are concerned, by 2019 MIFID or ESMA, ESMA would like to plan this on a T basis. So today you are doing it, today it will get reported. This is how our presentation as far as the MIFID second FIRDS is concerned, FITS are concerned. We are already into the consulting of uh, RECTEC and I am very pleased to share that 3rd January 2018 Treasury Consulting would be very limited company in Asia. Those, those who would have all three, functional part of Treasury, technological part of Treasury and regulatory part of Treasury. We would be covering all the three domains of our treasury function. In case you do have any consulting requirements or any training requirements, my mobile number is very visible, 9899242978. My email is rahul.magan at the rate treasuryconsulting.in. Thank you very much and have a wonderful time.